it got popular for a reason. Everyone knows take calcium, vitamin D, calcium, vitamin D. That still kind of goes back to only one half of the equation. Yeah, bone is calcium in terms of the mineral content, but healthy bone isn't just a big block of calcium. There's a lot of other stuff in there because it's a living system. And bony matrix is what gives it both the strength and maintains a little bit of flexibility there so that you can bend and not break instead of just brittly breaking every time that something bad happens. So here is where the whole D3K2 thing has really you know, caught fire recently. It got popular for a reason. The reason why is D3 raises your calcium, it helps you absorb more calcium from food you're eating. It helps you reabsorb calcium from you know, kidney loss, potentially. So instead of going out in the urine, your kidneys recapture that calcium, send it back into circulation. The problem is you don't want a ton of calcium just in circulation because then it can get deposited in your arteries and things like that, which then gets to those brittle arteries I mentioned before. Instead, it's better if you can have a little homing signal, send that calcium to the bone where it will reinforce some of the strength properties there. And that's where the K2 comes in. The K2 works with the D3 to send that calcium to the bone instead of getting stuck in arteries and that kind of bad stuff, calcifying them. It's because it's not protein, it's not, you know, whey sequences in our bones, it's collagen that gives it a matrix that makes it flexible. So you wanna make sure you're consuming the amino acids that are actually in collagen, which aren't the same ones that are in general, you know, meat and dairy-based proteins. Those amino acids are in abundance in collagen peptides, and they're pretty inexpensive, and you can just kind of take them all day. They also help with skin health, because your skin is a ton of collagen too, of course. So many reasons to take it.